All right, welcome back. This is the third and final video in this series. In the last video, we got our loot system created and then we set up a little scoring system that helped us take care of the loot once we've collected it. I'm going to close that up and then I am going to actually close this created group up as well and click in this blank space and add another group. I'll call this one Magnetize and I'm gonna move it up in here underneath created. Okay, so we have in our created one that we created in the last video, we have our magnetize is true and the else statement. We still have to put something in here, but we're not quite there yet. We will get to that here in a minute. But for now, we are going to continue checking this ready variable. So let's add an event to magnetize and go into our loot object and scroll down to Boolean instance variable set and we're going to choose ready, hit done. So how this is going to work, I'm gonna go over here on the layout to show you. I'm gonna move my loot piece in here. We're going to check to see if the loot is above the player, below the player, to the left of the player, or to the right of the player. And then we're going to make some other decisions once we determine those four main factors. And we're gonna start off by detecting whether the loot is on the left or the right of the player. You can see up here the X and Y position of the loot. The left number is the X. You can see it changing as I move it. So we're going to need to know is that X number less than the player's X? That means it's to the left or is it greater than the player's X? That would mean it's on the right. Okay, let's go back to the event sheet and set some of this up. I only want these checks to take place if this variable has been set to true. Everything we're going to create, all the checks are going to go underneath this event as a sub event. So highlight this block and press B on the keyboard. That gives us a blank sub event. Double click to go into it and get that loot object. And I'm going to type in compare X. And I wanna know if it is less than the player X. So the coordinate we're gonna check for is player dot X. So what this says is the loot is to the left of the player. So once we check to see if we're to the left of the player, we wanna check to see how far we are from the player. So let's highlight this whole block of code, press B on the keyboard to create another sub event. Let's say we want our player to be magnetized, or the loot to be magnetized to the player if it's within 200 pixels. So here's our player at uh, 1024, actually let's, change this to 1000. Okay, our player's at 1000, our loot is at 864. If I move it back, there's 800, that's exactly 200 pixels away from our player object. So if I move it back again, now we're more than 200 pixels. So to check to see if we're in the 200 pixel range, we could say, is the loot object X value greater than the player X value? Well, no, it's not. Player is at 1,000, we're only at 768. But what if we said the loot is greater than the player's X value minus 200 pixels? Well, that would make that spot 800 pixels because our player is at 1,000 minus 200 would be 800. So the loot is at 768. It's not at 800. But if it's here, then that would be true. So let's go ahead and set that up. Let's go into this blank sub event and get our loot object. And I am going to compare our X again. And this time, I want to know if it is greater than or equal to our player's X minus that 200 pixels. And if that's true, then we would be within range for this loot to be magnetized to our player. So let's go ahead and set that part up. Let's go back into our created group and where we have is magnetized true, let's set that up to magnetize to our player. And how we're gonna do that is create a sub event under this block of code. So highlight the whole block, B on the keyboard for a sub event, and then Double click to go into it, system, and let's get that every tick. So every frame of the game, we wanna move the loot towards the player's X and Y value. So let's add an action and get our loot object. And I'm going to type in move 
at angle. The angle is going to be wherever the loot object is pointing towards the player. And that's going to update 60 times a second. So if the player moves, the loot will change its angle. And we will get this value by using the expression angle. So type in angle, and then it needs some values. And we put those in parentheses. So angle, parentheses, and you see up here it says x1, y1, x2, y2. So x1 and y1 are going to be where we start. And we're going to start with the loot object. So loot dot x, and then comma, loot dot y, comma. And then we want to know where we're pointing to, and that's going to be the player dot x, comma, player dot y, end parentheses. And I played with this a lot. And I figured out that if by using the size of project that I'm using for this example, that uh, 10 pixels will catch up to the player no matter how fast we move. Okay, so that's going to get our loot to move towards our player. This is not going to do anything just yet because we haven't set this to true. So let's come down here in this action right here and add an action, go into loot and come down here to set Boolean, magnetize to true. And then I'm going to back up a little and shoot. And then as I get closer, oh, we were facing the wrong direction. Uh, I'm going to reset that. And I'm going to go to the other side. Because we set the checkup to see if the loot was to the left of the player. So to the left of the player. And as soon as I get within 200 pixels, it starts magnetizing to me. Okay, so we're going to need to check this several different times, several different ways. Move that off to the side a little. And then uh, I'm going to select the enemy object and then control click and drag out a copy. And I'm going to do this several times. You can set yours up however you want. I'm just going to put a few around the level so we have several instances to shoot when we are testing. Okay. So I'm going to go back into this, and I am going to shoot this, and I'm going to show you something else. We're only checking the x value. So if I go all the way up here, I'm definitely way more than 200 pixels away. But if I get closer, they all come up to me. That's because we're only checking for the x value. So we need to set up to also check the Y value in this same check. I'm going to highlight this magnetize set to true and delete it. We're going to put that in a different location here real soon. And once we have checked to see if we're on the left side and within 200 pixels, then we can start checking for the Y. So let's highlight this whole block of code and press B on the keyboard to create yet another sub event. And this is going to work the same way the X did. So if the loot is above the player or below the player, then we're going to run some other checks. And then we will also check once we determine, is it above or below the player? Is it within that 200 pixel range? Back on the event sheet, let's double click to go into the sub event, go to loot, and I'm gonna type in compare Y, and I'm going to see if it is less than, that would put us above the player, and that will be a uh, player dot y. Now, once we've determined that it is above the player, we are going to highlight that whole block. B for a sub event. And let's go ahead, go in and do a distance check. So get our loot object and compare y. And I want to know if it is greater than or equal to our player's y position minus that 200. Now, if I add an action, go into loot and uh, set our Boolean magnetized to true, this should work from the y position as well. So let's destroy that. Now, when I, I come up here, it's not magnetized to me because although the x check is true, the y is not. But if I get within range, uh, it, it kind of works. We still have some work to do on it, but we have taken care of one issue. Okay, before we go any further with this, 
this 200 pixels is going to appear several times in our code. If we want to change the distance at any time, we'll have to go in and change each one of these individually. We don't want to do that. So just in a uh, blank space below this, right click and let's add, it should come up as local variable. Uh, if it doesn't, just pick global variable. And once we're done, you can click and drag it into this group. I'm going to call this loot distance. And that will be a number. And actually, I'm going to go in and change that number to 200. And then we can go into these two. And this one will be player x minus loot distance. And this one will be player y minus loot distance. Make sure that that uh, minus is still there in front of the variable. So now we can change this variable just one time and it'll change all the rest of the times that this variable is used in our code. Okay, while we're in this x checking if it's to the left of the player, we check if it's above the player, but we also need to check if it's below the player. So that check is going to need to happen within this X check. So I'm going to highlight this block of code and press B on the keyboard and it's going to set a sub event that is indented the equal distance of our first Y check. So now we can go into this one and go into our loot and compare Y and this time we'll check if it is greater than our player dot Y. So here we're checking are we above the player here we're checking if we're below the player. And then we'll do the same thing we did up here. Let's highlight that whole block B to create a sub event for that. And this time we'll check to see if we are below the player within 200 pixels. So our Y value increases that second number here, that 832, that increases as it moves down. We're going to want to know if our loot is less than the player's Y value, which it's at 672. Here we're at 800 something, that's not true. But if we say our 672 plus 200 pixels, that would be 872. And yes, we would be within that 200 range right here. So the same way we did with the X, we'll do with the Y, but we just have to switch up our greater than and less than. So let's double click to go into this, grab our loot and type in compare Y. And we want to know if it is less than or equal our player dot y plus that loot distance variable. And then if that is met, this will also be true. So let's highlight this control click and drag a copy down to this bottom one. And this is set up for the loot being on the left side of the player. So once our variable is ready and that's true, we check to see if it is on the left. If it is, is it within 200 pixels on the left? If that's true, then we check the Y. Is it above the player? If no, then we skip on down to this one. Is it below the player? If that's true, then we check to see if it's within that 200 pixels. If it is, set it to true. This kicks in and we collect loot. Let's try that out. So it's not gonna work from the right. So let's test the left. And if I get close, it magnetizes to me. And we have another one. We can try it up here. I'm going to go up above it. And if I get close, it starts to magnetize to me. I'll go below and get close and it starts to come in. And you see that one didn't because the player was to the left of the loot. So uh, that part of the code has not been set up yet. The loot being to the left up or down is set up and works nicely. Okay. This next part's actually pretty easy because it's almost a cut and paste job. In fact, I am going to highlight from this check down, control C to copy, control V to paste. And it just pastes at the same indentions for all the sub events. It pastes the exact same block down here. So we're going to change a few things starting with this check. This is if we're to the left, the loot is to the left of the player. This one will be to the right of the player. So let's double click to go into that, change less than to greater than. Now we have a whole new check. So if the loot is on the right side of the player, we need to check if it is within the distance going the other way. So we'll need to change this greater than or equal to less than or equal and 
player X plus the loop distance. And those are the only two changes we need to make. The rest of this will take place the same way it does up here. And if we play, I'll shoot over here. I can be on any side, on the top, the bottom, here's from the left, and it works perfectly. And we can try to run away from it. It does not work. Looks good. Our loot is uh, counting up here. And I think that we have covered all the areas. Uh, one more thing we could do is you could test it at different distances. Uh, we could do, let's say, 300. And... You know, this could be an upgrade or something that your player gets that uh, they can magnetize loot from a greater distance. So you don't have to be as close. Or you could uh, drop it down to, say, 100. Then you'd have to get pretty close to it. So you got to get really close to it, but it still magnetizes to you. So you can play around with that. I'm going to set mine back at 200. I think that's a pretty good distance for the type of project we have set up and I'm going to take one last look through everything and I think that we are all set up. Hopefully this helps you out with some kind of feature to put in uh, a game or build something around. I want to thank everybody for watching. That's going to do it for this series. If you're not subscribed to the channel yet, please go ahead and do so. Hit that thumbs up while you're at it. Make sure you are saving often and I will see you in the next one.